Hey guys out there, and welcome to another day with Slick, or better you. It's your host, Matt. Do you know that when you have a guy who goes from Genoa City to Springfield to Landview to Life with Barney, you know, you got an interesting guy with a long, interesting history who has played so many interesting good roles, so many good characters. And he's somebody that you would love to have in your life as a friend. Now, when he was in Springfield, he wasn't the guy, he wasn't the, he had the edginess, but he came around, especially when he had a dog named Zyla into the picture. Then he went to Landview and found out he was a Buchanan, Phil Carey. Then he went to Life with Barney. And before even all that, he was in General City as, as a bad guy. But we all love him the most as AC Mallet. And before I welcome our guests, I got a throwback promo here on the air. If he's watching, I hope he enjoys it. Here we go. The secret past of AC Mallet has resurfaced, but confronting it could prove deadly. Oh, well, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Doran himself, Adrian on Younger and the Restless, AC Mallow on The Guy in the Light, Ben Davidson on One Life to Live, and many more roles in between and after. Um, and I, here he is. Let me just give him a boy here. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey, man. How are you, buddy? Good, man. How you doing? I'm good, brother. Thank you. Hey, thanks for coming back, man. It's a pleasure. Sure. sure. So how how things been going, man, since we last spoke? <clears throat> um, you know how it's going. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it's going. We're just, you know, I wouldn't say we're locked down, but we, yeah, we just do the necessity stuff, you know, and just lay low. I'm yeah. built, but I'm built for this. You give me the New York Times and <laughs> a few other things, and I'm good to go. Yeah. Well, you know, man, um, I just had to ask, you know, um, I know we talked before um, last year, and now as you see, I don't know if we saw the intro, but I got a whole new show. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, some fans have been waiting to have you come back on. I mean, um, there's one fan named Amy and a few others who are huge fans of yours, and I've been airing a lot of Mallet episodes on my other channel, so it's past. Um, I just... Just yesterday, I, I aired the episode when uh, Harley brought Zyla the mallet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Zyla, yeah. what an amazing dog. <laughs> she was, after she left me, she was going to a boy in Ohio to, you know, live and take care of. But um, that that was fun because, for, for a lot of reasons, I'm a big dog lover. But um, also, uh, no one else could pet Zyla but me. Yeah. And no one could go near her because she had to be. Um, focused just on me and that that drove Ellers crazy and a few others and uh, I took full advantage of it but um that dog was incredible because you know we would do a rehearsal and it it, it, it responded either voice commands or, or gestures and it would uh do everything you're supposed to do in rehearsal but once we shot and you know when you're shooting a soap you kind of save your emotional stuff for eight for the, the shot you don't do it in rehearsal right and um and so when I would I was you know I was deaf, paralyzed, and impotent. So, <laughs> pretty frustrated cop. So, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I had some scenes where I was pretty emotional, and she would come up. And at one point, she put her hand on the the wheelchair and came right up in my face, and you know, was just trying to calm me down. And it, it was really, really beautiful. We had, we had a really lovely relationship, and uh, I hated to see her go. I, I literally, I tried to buy her. Yeah, it's like she's not for sale, and and I didn't mean disrespect to the. You know to, that she was going to help someone. She just it was such an incredible dog, and um, and uh, but they said no. She's uh, it's not. You know, obviously, it doesn't work like that. But it's yeah, real, and it wouldn't have worked out anyway. Living in Manhattan with a border collie is crazy. So, <laughs> so. I, I wish I could have. Well, I know I was a kid, then, but I, but you know I wish I I could have had it because you know even looking back at that episode, she she seemed so calm, so nice, trained. Yeah, she wasn't. She's an, yeah, she's yeah. An incredible, incredible dog. Yeah. I was lucky. I've worked with a couple of really cool dogs in my career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you. I mean, um, even prior to that, were you somebody that loved dogs? Yeah, you know, we had um, growing up. We usually we had a dog. Uh, we mm -hmm. um, we have. I mean, we had a few dogs, but um, we had a, when I was little. We had a Bouvier de Flander. It's this big Belgian sheep dog, kind of looked like a bear, and she was a guiding eye dog. And her master wow. passed away when she was five, so they retired her, and uh, we got her. 
And mm. uh, then we were in high school. We, we got a German Shepherd. And uh, she was a little nutty, but she was a great dog. Mm. But uh, and great, super, really good watchdog. But so yeah, and, and when I when I was leaving Guiding Light, I was probably influenced by Zyla. But um, I was leaving, and I was like, I'm going to LA, and I'm getting a dog. And yeah. I did, and, that's, and I ended up getting a pit pit lab mix named Jim, and I had him for 13 years. And I mean, he went blind. I'd have his eyes removed. He was he, he was on TV. He did talk shows. He's in a book. Like he, that dog <laughs> led that dog led a life. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I know we got a we, we got a COVID pit uh, last May. So keep yeah. it going. Yeah. How about you? You got dogs? Well, <laughs> I don't have any at the moment. Um, the last time I had a dog was in 2012 or 13. Yeah. When I was in school, uh, college. Um, the thing about me that I tell people, which is, I don't know why, but it, it, it blows them. But for some reason, um, when I tell them this, but all my life, I've always had girl dogs. I never had a guy dog. Um, my stepdad had maybe one or two who were um killed in hunting accidents but all of them we've had were girl dogs they were beagles yeah the last talk i had was a mini chihuahua named piper who <laughs> followed me around you know wait for me when i got you know it, yeah. it drove it drove me insane because every morning even if i didn't have to go to school or work or anywhere she would just wake me up i was oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother. like why, why are you bothering me i'm sleeping mm, you know exactly. I, I would, you know i'd be up half the night because I'm, I'm i'm out to get up so and i sleeping and then like oh, yeah, that's, oh. that's not good <laughs> yeah i know i didn't get a lot of sleep but yeah she that, that was my good friend yeah yeah it's cool man yeah um well i, I got another clip to show you I and mean, then we'll talk a little more um this was a little clip of you when you was on the young and the restless so you know it's too late and i know it's too late but you're still reaching out to me You're not making this easy for me. Look, Cassandra. I go through hell for you. You think back. Everything I did for you the night your husband was murdered, everything I did after that was to protect you. I made you the center of my whole life. You did nothing but push me away. And now you want me to feel sorry for you? For the jam you're in? Now you want me to feel sorry for you? The jam you're in? I like that guy. <laughs> he made complete sense yeah i mean he was yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i heard a rumor man now i heard a rumor you're gonna grow that long hair back is that true <laughs> yeah that's quite a rumor <laughs> yeah, you know i mean my girlfriend's really sweet and she's saying you look good bald i like it but i'm like man every time i see some actor I go or anyone i know i'm like damn look at that hair that hair's amazing <laughs> Yeah, I hated having a. I hated when I was, and I and I knew then, like I was, well, then I was, I was about twenty. When I was, I got my early thirties. It started like, yeah, probably even then, um, it started like you know, you're in the shower, you could see it coming out. And I'm like, oh man, this isn't good. My family, my family history was not in my favor, so it was just a matter of yeah. time. But I held in there as long as I could. But that show, so that was mm -hmm. my first really good gig, and I didn't know a lot, and I didn't speak. I didn't. I just did what I was told. Not that. I don't with directions, but when you're in a makeup chair and they're trying to do something, you're like, whoa, whoa, I don't, I don't want that. But they kept saying, don't cut your hair. And they kept blowing it up, blowing up. I look like Darth Vader, man. They put moose in it. And mm. I had just, I used to call it helmet hair. And uh, it was hysterical. And after, you know, after that, when I got the guiding light, I, you know, I cut it shorter and I had, you know, a little bit more control <laughs> over what they were yeah. doing. <laughs> I, I actually, um, I liked it. I mean, I know it was for the time because that was, a, as they called a, a mullet. And everybody kind of had one. Um, I, I sent you a clip. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, now I, I, I found an episode from '91 with you and Frank both having long hair. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Yeah, we were looking good. <laughs> mm. Um, I know we talked a bit about this last time, but um, just for those who are new watching, um, what is your memories of being on Younger and Russell's? I mean, you was with Cassandra in that clip, and yeah. you um, obviously you got to probably work with. Eric Braden and um, Doug, Doug Davidson. Yeah, Brett Hadley. You yeah. know, I, I, um, it, it was all a shock to me that I they hired me because um, I, I was trying, I wanted to get on a soap because I was a little older. I was starting my career because I was in construction for like eight years, and I moved out to LA with a one way ticket to try to be an act, actor. And um, I had some la lessons and a coach under my belt, but um, I came out here pretty blind. And um, um, 
so when I got that audition, I, got, I ended up getting an agent. I got those little things, and, and I got the audition, and um, I, I mustn't have been too nervous because I'd hurt my back, and I, I lied down in the hallway. So when casting came out, I'm there, I'm lying on the ground in the hallway, and they're like, what, you know, what are you doing? I was, I was trying to explain, and they're like, come on, get him in there. And then I was going to test for it, and I just was like, wow, what? Because I didn't really don't, I, I didn't fully know what I was doing. I was taking classes and everything, but I was still learning on the fly. And that's why I wanted to get on a soap because they, it's like, like I used to say, they, they throw you in the deep end. You know, you got to learn to swim or get out because uh, there's so much to do. And, you know, they want to get it done in a one one take, two takes. And so yeah. I was always um, made sure I knew my lines and was prepared no matter what. And um, But they were working me. I was working like four or five days a week. It was great. And I was making money, but I was so tired. And then we, we went to uh, the Bermuda for 10 days to shoot. And it was me and Cassandra, me and Nina, and Doug and uh, Brett Hadley, who played his father. He was a police officer on the show. And it mm -hmm. ended up becoming that, that trip. We became, uh, we flew together there and we became uh, very good friends after that. But um, um, I, when we were in Bermuda, it was really great. But we, like Doug had days off. We were, we just worked day and night. And I was, I was like sleeping in the makeup chair. I was like so tired, but loving everything. You know, it was just the best. And you didn't want to miss out. So even if we had a moment where, I could go get some sleep. I wanted to go have a drink with the crew, and you know, because it was just it was Bermuda, you know. So I didn't sleep much, but then we did a little uh, weekend trip to Pittsburgh to shoot there, which was so much fun. And but same thing. I mean, I just didn't sleep. We were working nights, days, everything. Yeah. But um, but I I just I was always surprised that they hired me, you know, because I, I don't know who else I was up against or any of that stuff. But I did take full advantage of uh, of the role, and uh, I made some good friends and. I mean, just three months later, after that ended, um, which I knew it was going to end, and I, I was surprised I even got eight months out of it. But Bill Bell told me once that uh, he figured it would be a couple months, but it was working, you know, and they just kept writing. But um, they also did something you're not supposed to do in murder mysteries is you don't bring the killer in after the murder. <laughs> and and they, they did that. And so, because uh, it's always, you know, that's there's no who done it there. You know, it's like, oh, it's the new guy with the mullet. But um, but three months later, I got I got a book Guiding Light. And I had a lot of confidence going into that audition. And uh, and um, Calhoun, Robert Calhoun, who hired me, he just told me when I read for him, he says, this guy can't be cocky enough. And I was like, okay. So <laughs> when I finished the audition, he looked at me, he goes, are you cocky? And I go, no, nah, man, I'm not. just doing what you said. So I booked that. And then the problem was um, the viewers didn't like me because they kept seeing Adrian Hunter in Mallet's clothes. And uh, yeah. So they, they they wrote this this scene where um, I took um, um, the actress Beth Chamberlain. Her she was pregnant, and I was investigating her boyfriend, her grand, grand Alexander. And so she, I had to take her to the hospital. She went into labor, and we had to. It was a snowstorm, and we got a, like a car accident, and we're stuck in the snow. And I end up like singing to her, and then I carry her to the hospital. And after that, I was accepted by the viewers because yeah. like, that's not the bad guy. So, it was good. It was it was cool. They did that because they, I guess, they felt they had to. Yeah, and um, to go back a bit, um, you're right though that you did work a lot because I remember. I mean, I don't, I haven't seen all the Weiner episodes from night from that time when you was on it, but from what I've seen, almost every episode that I've seen on YouTube or from what they aired on the CBS during the pandemic, you was in all of them, and I was like. Did he ever have an off day? Because he's, in, I mean, you know, you was on like every yeah. episode, and I've seen the clips where you was like when y'all shot the lo on the location at the beach. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're trying to do from here to eternity. <laughs> but uh, no, I was, I was, I was, I was literally because the the last that especially the last few weeks of my job there mm -hmm. it was really intense. And I remember I'd be in my apartment and I'd be on my bed looking at lines, mm -hmm. and I'd fall, I'd, I'd like just fall asleep. And I'd wake up, I go, oh, okay. And I start looking at eyes again and I fall asleep. And that's how I was learning. And I'd be driving to work. I'm like, oh my God, get your slap in my face and stuff. And yeah. I mean, thank thankfully it all worked out. But uh yeah, yeah, they 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 pushed me. It was great. I was very grateful. But I but I guess it paid off because from that, and then going to got in light and years later on one life, you would you learned from that and then you was able to take that and yeah. And you, you know, the one the thing. first day on one life, um I hadn't done a soap in over five years. I had left in 93, left One Life, uh, Guiding Light in 93. Mm -hmm. And I was in LA for like five and a half years. And in that time, I, I got married and and um, 
I was, I was all the, the soaps were just calling. They were asking me, and I got, I got invites from all of them. And I thought, well, maybe I should because I just missed out on this pilot I really wanted, and I, I shouldn't have wanted it that bad, but I, I didn't, I didn't book it. Yeah. I was kind of really sick of LA, and I like New York, so um, um, I started, um, you know, t- responding. And uh, anyway, I ended up getting one life. To, I didn't know at the time that my Joe Farron Phelps was now the boss there. And she had, she had worked, you know, she had uh, been my boss at Guiding Light for a couple of years. Yeah. So I, um, <clears throat> but my first day I was, I wasn't, I told Erica, I said, we'll have fun tomorrow. <laughs> Today's going to be tough, you know, cause I hadn't done it in so long and it's a lot. Um, and Erica's, you know, I knew who she was. She was, she's an icon. Yeah. And, um, uh, and I, and she, she relaxed, she made me relax because the day I met her was like, you know, day before we started or something. And she walks in and she goes, Oh, I know you. And I'm like, you do? Oh, sweet. You know, that's, that's a, <laughs> a pretty good icebreaker when it comes from, you know, Erica Slazak. And so, uh, mm-hmm. um, and it went, you know, we got through the first day. I wasn't terrible. I just, I just needed, you know, to get warmed up. And then after that, we just had fun for three and a half years. Yeah. And like I always say, between us, we have like six or seven Emmys. I don't know how many she has. <laughs> I got none. You got a couple of nominations, though. I remember. In I, mean, I had one. I had one nomination. That was the Zyla storyline. Yeah. I got I got nominated for being impotent. <laughs> um, before I go to the next question, I was going to ask you. Um, I got one fan named Amy who is such. She is a huge fan of yours. Every time I upload an episode, she always asks me to upload a mouth episode. She oh, says, "Hi, Amy." She says, "Long time fan. Be been rewatching early '90s GL apps, and it holds up so well. So it was today could actually learn a thing or two." <laughs> but she's a huge fan of yours, and Mr. Ter- Terrell has said a couple of things to you. And one thing he asked was, um, "What is your memories of Michael Sazzo and Beverly McKenzie?" Yeah, you know, we did. Um, I've I've done. There's a gentleman who's writing a book on Beverly, a biography, and uh, I did a phone interview with him. His, her son Scott mm-hmm. recommended he talk to me. Um, God, I just get chills thinking about them. Um, Beverly and I were really close. I, I worked with her, not a ton, but I did work with her. And I was always, those were days, boy, you know, you talk about intimidation. She was so powerful and such a lovely woman, but I would be very, she knew it too. I was just a little nervous in those scenes. Yeah. And, um, but also um, I used to call, I used to say we dated because we'd go out and have dinner, just the two of us. And I'd, I'd go to her place and I'd pick her up, go out and buy her dinner. And, and she said she loved it because whenever she went out, she was always you know, doing all the buying and stuff. So it was just nice to have go out with someone. And, um, um, you know, I just, we just talk and I'd learn about her life and, you know, you, you know, uh, in the, in the sixties and this is well documented. We, we, we had, um, I did a thing with Alan Locker not too last year with Kimberly Sims and Jocelyn Seagrave and a few others. And, um, we were talking about her and, um, she lived with James Earl Jones in the sixties. That's really? Pretty, that's pretty progressive, yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and she was a stunningly beautiful woman. Like, I, 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 even when I would go out with her, she was beautiful. But when I'd look at you, see these pictures of her when she was, you know, the ingenue, um, just gorgeous, beautiful woman. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then when I was in L.A., I was living out here, and I, um, I think I was doing Bonnie's show because I had left One Life to Live to do it, and um, I had to go by General Hospital to record some things for One Life to Live. And Jill was now out here, so she was directing me in the booth. So it was just some stuff for the storyline. I can't remember. And um, I, I ran into Scott, uh, Beverly's um, son, and he's mm-hmm. a director there. And I said, I was like, how's your mom? And he gave me her number. She was living in, uh, in, um, in the Wilshire Corridor, if you know it, L.A. at all. But um, So I called her up, and I said, uh, <clears throat> I want to come over, and I'll bring dinner. Because she was starting, he was saying she was starting to, like, her, her mind was going a little. She had an aide with her and everything. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'll bring a bottle of wine and I'll bring dinner. And I go, right. well, what would you like? The alpacata. I mean, I couldn't get the words out. She goes, the alpacata. I'm like, okay, that's pretty specific. I'll find the alpacata. <laughs> and uh, I found the alpacata and I went up there and we had the, just a lovely time uh, just catching up. And, you know, she, you could tell she was, you know, her, her memory was slipping and stuff, but she was still fine. And, and my regret is I didn't do it more. You know, I should have done it. I should have done it every week, every few weeks. And I didn't. Um, yeah. and it was a shame. And then I was in my trailer. I was shooting um, Secret Life of the American Teenager. Mm. And I, I get the New York Times out here because I'm obsessed with the crossword. And I was, um, and I read the obituary, obituaries because uh, there are so many history lessons. It's amazing. A lot of these World War One, World War Two soldiers or 
there's so many, so much interesting stuff in that on those pages. And um, yeah. I flipped open the page, and there was a picture of Beverly, and I just let out this yell, like, oh, because I didn't know. I, you know, that's I. It's happened me a couple times. I don't like finding out friends of mine died by looking at the obituary, you know. Yeah. But um, she had a lovely, you know, life, and um, and the book will be. I'm really looking forward to seeing this book. Um, and Michael. Yeah, Michael and I were really good friends. We, you know, our our characters hated each other, and it just made it so much more fun because we loved each other so much that you would you allow actors to get away with more when you you know what I mean. Maybe your character doesn't look as good in that moment, mm -hmm. and, and and we were. I mean, I was I was always like that. I don't care. Like Tim Gibbs had to punch me once on One Life to Live. He was like a sucker punch, and in rehearsal I fell down. I, I went to the ground and the director comes out and he goes, you don't, he doesn't have to knock you down. And I go, no, let him, let him knock me down. He's, I was, <laughs> I was bigger than him. And I'm like, let, let him have this moment, you know? And, and cause it, you should have no ego when it comes to that stuff. And sadly, so many actors do, but yeah, Michael wouldn't with me. And we would, um, we would ad lib and just add little things just to stick the other guy, you know, and then laugh at him when the take was over. And, um, I, we socialized. I'd, I'd go out with him and his daughters. Um, we'd go get hamburgers. You know, there was a bar in the upper, upper west side called Allstate, and they had really good burgers. It was just a little dive bar. Yeah. And, uh, and we'd go there and um, um, just, were, just were good friends and really looked, you know, I really uh, enjoyed working with him. And his work was fantastic. And the one year I was nominated, he was too. And Bob yeah. Woods and um, probably A. Martinez and uh david canary it was all the classic guys except me i just hopped in there yeah. and uh and and uh and I, I was i wanted it bad and i was sitting in the front row me and my mom are next to oprah i'm like what the heck's going on here but um um i was really deep down rooting for zaz because he he had been on the show a long time and he great he thankfully he got one eventually but i knew how much he, he wanted he would love to win one and um so i was kind yeah. of just give it his ass i'm fine and I was probably thinking maybe I get another nod at some point. I don't know, but I was like, whatever. And um, David Canary won, which uh, I think is bullshit because he plays two characters. <laughs> it's like <laughs> he got twice the chance. Yeah. But um, uh, anyway, uh, sorry about swearing. And uh, um, but but Zaz did end up winning. I think like maybe the next year or something like that. He did. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. he's he was just a great guy, and and um uh. uh uh, you know, it, it's it's just, it's so sad because I was, you know, he was he was working on One Life uh, when I I got hired, and um, I expected to I expected to encounter him again and you know and, and just pick up where we left off because I was I was I, I've been in Los Angeles, and um, and he died he died like um, I can't, I think I started on a Monday and he had died the weekend prior, mm -hmm. something like that. So that was that was really sad. Yeah. But um, he was he was just a, like I said, we, we we got along extremely well. And when your characters hate each other, I'm telling you, it's really nice when you love each other off camera. It really makes it easier. Absolutely, and and I think that's something you know. It always interests fans when two characters like like who you saying they don't get along on set, but yeah. I mean, well, on, on the show, but then they yeah. wonder. I got like that in real life. So hearing stories like this, like, no, we, we got along. I mean, you know, it's it's not yeah. uncommon for like when you're in a love story, it's not uncommon where the character, the, the actors really don't like each other or take to each other. And right. I've had conversations with more than one couple on that, on especially on Guiding Light. And I would go to them. I go, look, you guys got to realize you're business partners now. You better, you know, put those petty things aside and find the love and work for that. Because if you show up, if, if it seems like you're not working, at it and you're not there's no chemistry they're not going to write for you and you're not going to make any money and you're not going to be on tv yeah. but if they think if they see something this is what's acting what it's called for you know if they see something you're going to make more money and you're going to they're going to resign you and you're going to have a career these kids will come on the show and they think i got a three-year deal and i go no you don't you have a 13-week deal they have a three-year deal you got nothing so just because you got good hair you know doesn't mean anything you got to lower your lines and you got to bring something right you know, I, I saw many people do it and i saw many people not last, just get yeah. the boot, and they're they're like shocked. I'm like, well, no, I don't get it. You didn't do anything. You expected them to do it all. You know, you got to do some. See, this is why you should be a teacher because you know so much about acting, and you, you could teach the young generation about acting. You know, yeah, I, you know, I I guess just tell them what I experienced. But um, I mean, yeah, I've been doing this a very long time now, and uh, um, and I've been blessed to work and do. You know, I'm not really theater, 
but I've done, you know, from, from, you know, uh, little independent films to daytime to sitcoms to dramas to, you know, films, a couple of big budget films. And you learn a lot on those and watching other people and, and, and those things. And also just my experience, you know, my, 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 my career in soaps, I've had a bunch of lovers, you know, on air and they all worked because we liked, we, we liked each other. I was, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. And, and, um, and we, you just were, I was so respectful every time, like love scenes, all that stuff, just be the, be the gentleman, do the right thing. And you can make this work. Right. And unfortunately it did. Speaking of which, um, I got a clip here with one of your favorite love, love mates. Um, let me see if I can get it. For <laughs> this is crazy. What are you doing here? I'm Tony, I'm glad to see you, but you gotta get out of here. Steve's gonna be back any second. Steve's gonna be going. How do you know? Steve's gonna set it up. No, but the police came and took him. Yeah, um, stolen credit cards? No, but the police came Oh, you just think you're so... I just think you're... Looking smart enough to take care of us. Smart to take care of us. I want you to elope with me. I said that. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Man. Nadia Capone. Yeah, she's lovely. She's a Canadian woman. Really cool. We had a great time. Man, who, you, man, who, you, who you telling? When I first saw that, I was like, man, she is gorgeous, and she got pretty long hair and everything. Yeah. I mean, she, I mean, I don't, I don't know how long her contract was, but it just in that once the thing with her father finding y'all, yeah. finding you and beating you up that, that ended. Yeah. yeah. She she did at least she did six months easy, um, I re that you know a few times in my career not a ton but I've had to um, audition actresses, and uh, but that without a doubt was my favorite time to audition the uh, those girls because they were all these beautiful dark haired women, and I it was hard for even like they would ask my opinion, but um, and it wasn't my up to me but they sure asked my opinion and I'm like it was it was very difficult because they were all. Uh, so good, but she, Cal Calhoun loved her, and he picked her, and um, and it, you know we had a great, great storyline. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what is your memories of court? Well, we talked about about this last time too a bit, but um, I, I enjoy watching your the scenes with both you and Frank Decapolis and you and Jerry Bodorn. I mean, you two, yeah. you, three, you three was something else on guy. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, again, we loved each other. Me and Frank, we were good buddies. We, you know, we hung out off, off we golf all the time. Um, we, you know, we, 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 we socialized all the time. And um, Jerry lived in Jersey, so I didn't get to see him much outside of work unless it was an event. But um, I, I probably like respected him more than anyone. Like I, I love that man so much. And I know I've spoken this last time. Um, I got to work with him a pretty good amount. And um, when you, we'd start rehearsal hall, you know, it was like seven in the morning. And we'd be going down there together, and uh, but I'd run ahead and stand at the door and go, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jerry Verdorn, and, <laughs> and then allow him to go th go into it to applause or whatever he got. And I did it every single time for three years, and because uh, I was just showing my 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 rev my reverence for him and um, and uh, my excitement, you know, because his yeah. he is the most he's got the most brilliant sense of humor, and it's so subtle. And I know we talked about that air airplane scene, which I. I, I I was able to, I think you sent it to me or something. I was able to see it again, but I had never forgotten it because it was just, Beth Ellers was hysterical in it. We, we, it was just one of those, and, and Maureen Garrett's in it too. It's just one of those scenes I thought that was, uh, you know, I, I said this to Bob Woods one night on a, fr it was like a Friday night on One Life to Live and we were the last two up and he, he was having like a tough night. Like he just, he was, fr he was just burnt and he kept making these self-deprecating jokes. And I mean, I'm bending over laughing and the crew didn't care. We're all mm -hmm. just having a blast. And uh, but I looked at him, I go, you know what? I don't care how long it is, I'm never gonna forget this night because this was so much fun. And I have it, you know, and it's it doesn't really matter really what the scene was about. I remember where it was and all that stuff, but there's just special scenes that just stick with you forever. And uh and the airplane one is definitely one with Jerry. But he he uh, he's just a fantastic man. And then he got on got, got on to go go on to play uh, uh, Clint with Erica. What's better? She got, she got him after me. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, I know that sounds cocky, but we got along really well. She, you know, we really got along well, and she right. was not happy about me leaving, 
And, um, but then Jerry shows, you know, Jerry comes in and says, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. It's ironic that both of y'all was on guy and light. I might know he was on there longer, but oh, much longer. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, you both was on guy and light to Springfield and then went to uh, one life. And then, cause you, you was on there. And then three years later, he come on there uh, taking yeah. over for uh, Clint Ritchie, of course. And yeah. blew just blew that away. He ended up staying there until the end of that show. Yeah. Yeah. You actually you actually came on there once as Ben's ghost for the anniversary. Um, and Jerry Gray was on there at the time, I believe. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get to work with him, but of course I saw him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I came on actually she uh Erica's character, Vicky, um she momentarily died and went to heaven. Right. And, and that's where she, and, and it was almost it looked like crossroads, like there was a pool table and you know, I was doing life with Bonnie at the time, and so <clears throat> they asked me to fly back. And Bonnie was very generous to say, you know, go do it. And um, and so uh, yeah, I, like I said, I didn't get. To, I only worked with Erica because it was heaven. <laughs> and I think, and also Erin Torpy, um, she had come back because I think her character, her character, yeah, had yeah, died, right? So she had come back too, and she had some heaven scenes. But um, yeah, I came back twice because the other time, <clears throat> it was um, the first time I came back was. Um, you know, when I, when, when I got life with Bonnie, they just, uh, I was in a, I was in a coma. Mm -hmm. I think I, I got shot. I was saving Erica's life. I got shot in the back of the head and it was an irreversible coma that right. I woke up from for a few minutes to tell her to move on, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, so I was just in a coma and I have a very good friend, this actress, Rusty Schwimmer, who, um, if you don't know her name, you, you know, her face, she works, she's, her resume is ridiculous, but, um, she had never done a soap and, and she always wanted to. And so I was talking to Frank Dacopoulos about coming back i said uh i go and he knew rusty because she'd come to visit me in new york and he loved her she's a very funny woman yeah. and um i said you got anything for rusty and he goes oh man i go he goes i don't have anything big enough i go no 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 she doesn't want anything big uh, an under five she doesn't care she just mm -hmm. wants the experience he goes well she could be your nurse i'm like perfect and and i was supposed to die in the scene and right. i told him i'm not dying on camera i've done enough i'm not doing that just tell someone so he goes she can tell everyone you're dead and i'm like oh my god that's like because <laughs> we're really close and i'm like we've never worked together we've been in we're in the same movie but we've never worked together and um right and so uh we flew to la i mean to new york and um and she got to meet erica and, and they got to work together and i just lied there i couldn't speak you know because i was in this coma but um they they decided not to kill me because erica's going to need a heart and mm -hmm. that's why um that's why uh, uh i didn't die then and then i guess they I died off camera and she, she got my heart and then the, the heaven scenes were after that. Oh, and here's the irony. So <clears throat> I'm on life with Bonnie. Mm -hmm. And when I, I didn't know Bonnie was doing a, uh, another series. Cause I'd done a series with her in the nineties. It only lasted like 15 shows called the Bonnie hunt show. We right. were, uh, it was David Letterman's. It was worldwide pants. And that was a classic CBS sitcom, you know, three camera. And, uh, <clears throat> and so, um, I got, a, I got a call from a buddy of mine, who was on, named Tom Virtue, an actor who was on the Bonnie Hunt show. And he says, you know, I just want to let you know that Bonnie's got another show going and she pitched you, but they won't, they won't go with you. And I'm like, Oh, well, I'm really flattered. That's a bummer. But, um, and so, um, <clears throat> they had a guy, an actor named Brian Kerwin. Did I, I think I might tell you the story, but Brian, Brian Kerwin was, um, he had a, a, a deal at ABC. And so they told Bonnie, this is going to be your new husband. And mm -hmm. so they were in rehearsals and it, it just, um, I guess it wasn't clicking. I don't know. I wasn't there. Right. And, um, and so they went to Bonnie and they said, we don't think he's the right guy for this role. And she said, well, I told you who the guy, right guy is. I want Derwin. And they said, well, we'll fly him in. So they flew me in. I screen tested and, uh, <clears throat> I ended up getting it. And, um, ironically he ends up getting one life to live working with Erica. And even in the variety, it said Derwin replaces Kerwin. But he took my job basically, and I took his. I've never met the man, and I know he's a good actor. He went on to do Broadway. I think he's in Osage, you know, August Osage County. That movie, that play. Right. Uh, he might. I think he might have been nominated. Like he's supposed to be a terrific actor. But uh, like I said, I've never met him. But um, we do have a history, which I think is kind of amazing. <laughs> that is interesting, and um, I don't think you told me that story. But of course, I know him because, like you said, he went to one life to live as yeah. Charlie, and then. Um, even before that, back in the day, I think he was on Younger and the Russells at one point. Oh, too. Was he, 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 yeah. They um when they had me come back, um, my my lines were basically I want her to let go, forget about me and, and go with him. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and uh, but I, I snuck in. I know I'm better looking, but I still want you to go with him. And they kept it. Frank kept it. I was so happy. <laughs> I just did, used to do that shit just to try to make Erica laugh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which isn't mm -hmm. easy to do. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I don't. I didn't watch the show a lot, but what is your memories of um, Secret Life? I mean, I know of it from the ABC Family Channel yeah. when it was called at the time. Now I know it's Freeform, but. I don't. I didn't. I don't know that show that well. Mm. Life. I know you was on there. Yeah. Um, probably the most fun I ever had in my life. Mm. Um, uh, Molly Ringwald played my wife, and in the pilot, a young Shailene Woodley um, is a 15 year old who gets pregnant by this this smoothie kid at um, in high school, or you know, 15, yeah, high school, and she's uh, got to figure out a way to tell us. And in the first few episodes, is you know, her her you know what she's going through and, and, um, and then she, when she tells us and in the first few shows, I, I really only had like one scene a show and, um, I was just trying to make the most of it. And I was also, I don't know why I was just trying to bring some comedy to this character. And, um, but, but I did it. It was five years of fun. And, and then my second daughter, my younger daughter was India Isley. Who's a, they're both her and Shailene are, have these great careers now, you know, doing film and, and uh, in, India was just in this, uh, last year was in that, uh, I think it's TBS miniseries with um, with uh, Chris Pine, mm -hmm. black no some of the Black Dahlia, you know that uh, it was like a period piece, but um, <clears throat> and it had a great count. You know, it was mostly about the high school kids, but then there's a lot of adults. And Steve Sharipa was on the show, and you know from Sopranos, and and uh, and me and him are still close friends to this day. Uh, I loved working with him and uh, and everybody on that show. It was just a good group of people, and um, I never was late. I was always early. I just mm -hmm. I, I walked on for a rehearsal. I didn't have a script. I knew my lines. I was just, I was, I, I just had so much fun on that show. And I worked with a dog. That's who I had um, this big white, gorgeous white Labrador named Moose, who was a model actor, actor model, right? And uh, <laughs> like I walked into a pet co one day and there's Moose in a poster. Wow. And, uh, and he was a great dog, except he had a tendency to hump my leg in the scenes. So we had to do some. <laughs> He just, and the, the trainers would go, just don't talk, don't pet him, do anything to him. And sure enough, we'd start a scene and there was a scene once, it was the four of us, Molly and, and India and Shailene are talking and I'm standing there and they can't, they're not looking at me and Moose is, and he's a big dog and he's just, and I'm trying to get him off. And of course the crew's laughing and everyone's finally Molly's like, what's going on? She looks over and everybody just lost it because he just, he was really into my right leg. Hey man. And they've done that. You know, I, I, I got two friends, brothers who I've known for years. They had a dog named Nino Big. Yeah. And one day I went to see them. Um, and he out of nowhere, I was sitting in the basement, look at my phone, he came up to me and just started hunting. I'm like, hey now, hold on now. <laughs> Buy me a drink at least. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> dogs, man. That that used to that used to always blow me about dogs, like when they would like hump human legs. It's like, yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. girl, come on now. <laughs> yeah, it's hysterical. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, speaking of dogs, hold on one second. Got something else for you here. Damn it. Whoop, should I play this for you earlier? Damn it. I'm sorry. I think I found the answer to all of our problems. What, a leg transplant? No. He has a friend who has a friend who's the perfect babysitter for you. Harley, I thought I was the one with a hearing problem. I told you, I don't need a babysitter. I told you, I don't need a babysitter. Presenting Zyla the Wonder Dog. Whoa! 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 In Zyla, the Wonder Dog. What? In Zyla, Wonder Dog. What? Yeah, that dog was awesome. Mm -mm -mm. Good kisser too. Yeah. No humping. I, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell that, that um, I, I haven't posted the episode yet. Is the, the 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 when you got your hearing back and and she was. I found it cool where you was in the wheelchair. Y'all would do scenes where she, you would roll up and she would just be calm sitting in your lap so calmly yeah. she wouldn't move. And she started licking you and licking Beth like that. Yeah, yeah. that. Crazy we we both thing. dog lovers, I guess, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was that was such a privilege. Um, and plus, the thing is, and you know this yeah. about soaps, um, in the summer, usually in summer storylines when kids are out of school and stuff, they would do specific storylines aimed at people, like whether there was something as, um, as terrible as date rape or um, just mm-hmm. anything that could help society. And so when we did this storyline, it was, it was to, you know, for people to be more aware of uh, people that canine companions. And I ended up, <clears throat> I went through my travels just flying to do appearances or whatever I was doing at the airport, wherever I I'd see people that were um, in chairs and, and we'd have great conversations about that and how happy they were that, that at least it was some focus put on them and their needs you yeah. know, during that time. And um, it was, uh, it was really, I felt honored to be a part of it. You know, it was interesting that, um, you know, doing that, your three years on that show, I mean, it, I mean, it feels like that's, I, I mean, of course, One Life and Y&R and Secret Life and Bonnie, but it feels like with G.O., that was that was a show that you left quite a, a mark on there for that three-year period. Cause even today, people are talking about it. They, you know, they can't wait to see Mallet. I mean, it's like, like I said, like, we, you know, Mallet was a no-nonsense guy. I mean, you, you trained Harley in the academy, and then you grew and became nicer to gave you Julie and um you know he that was an impact you know um even um remember Jeff Phillips and of uh, who were Phil um Hart him and uh Leonard Stubbs and yeah, yeah. Leonard Stubb yeah yeah Leonard Leonard and I were very good friends we hung out a lot outside of the work he had a dog who um was with him when he had his accident and thank God yeah. the dog was okay but his name just name was girl he saw he found him found the dog in the subway and never leashed it, just followed him everywhere around Manhattan. And um, the dog was so smart, and the building I was living in didn't allow animals. Yeah. And, uh, so Leonard had, like, these massive backpacks because he would carry, you know, all his um, uh, material, you know, the uh, – what the hell that is I called? You know, he's, uh, um, he flew those giant kites. That's how he got hurt. That's where he got injured. And, and he had a special harness set for her, so she would fly with him. But this wow. was amazing. So one day he, he was coming to my apartment. I'm like, we got to sneak her in. So he puts Zyla in his backpack, hoisted over his shoulder. The dog stays quiet as can be. We walk by all the security and everything up to my apartment. Just stare. It was a really brilliant dog. And it was that was what everyone's question was. What, what was, you know, was Zyla with him when he had his accident? And she wasn't with him that day, but he, she would ride, fly with him. And, yeah. um, and well, who's going who's gonna to take care of her? It was terrible. But he was, he was, he was a great guy. And that, that was so tragic. Yeah, because I, I had I had looked that up because I didn't I didn't know what that was, but when I saw what it was, I'm like, oh, is that when you flying down from that that thing? And I'm like, wow, like yeah, that- we we've gone with him and watched him do it. We drove up to the like to the Catskills and watched him launch off a cliff, and and um and fly around. And there were I was going to end up doing it with him. He was he he was so good. He, there's a <clears throat> there's a certain level that makes you a, you could it's like an instructional level. You know, you can teach it and all that. And, he was one of the best in the country, supposedly, and um, and I was going to go up with him one time, which I was I was going to do it, but I was my stomach just thinking about it. But um, yeah, because we would we were doing a lot back then. We were we were we were jumping out of planes. We were bungee jumping. We were trying all these, you know, because it was it was a you you know we, you could find find it. New Jersey had places to jump out of planes, and and uh, we were bungee. We, we did we did this illegal bungee jumping thing up in New York, upstate New York, and. After my second jump, and we were jumping on the, I mean, there was no, they put a little hay down. There was nothing to stop you if you, if the bungee stopped, snapped. Mm-hmm. And the New, York, New York troopers came in and shut down the operation. They just, these guys just had a big crane and they're letting people jump and we're stupid enough to do it. But then there was a, there was a nightclub in Manhattan on the west side, right on the water, and it was called Amazon. And uh, they had bungee jumping over the, over the Hudson. So, right. you know, if anything <laughs> happened, at least, you know, you're most likely going to make it. Yeah. Uh, mm. yeah, somebody just said it. Uh, hang gliding that's what it's hang gliding. Yeah, yeah, hang gliding. Exactly. I, uh, you know, I thought about doing some trying out some tricks when I was younger, but that one I don't know because I, I got heights phobia. So, me even trying to get up there, yeah. I, I, nah. well, you know, the day we went to see him, I was under the impression I was going out there with him, and mm. I'm telling you, I was like, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't notice the scenery, I was just like, oh, oh, oh it's gonna be something. I yeah. was gonna do it because I, I was kind of in a thrill seeker at that part of my life, but um, um, uh, I, I was glad when he said, "No, we're not doing that today." <laughs> so yeah, um, so I know earlier we talked a bit about um 
Bev and Michael, um, you worked with two legends on One Life, um, Phil Carey and Patricia Elliott, yeah. um, both of them who are gone. Um, yeah, I love I loved Asa, you know, Phil. Him as Asa, you know, he was something else. I, I loved how he always said, "What the hell?" Or you know, he he was a cusser on One Life and, and off, Patricia, off camera too. <laughs> <laughs> and Patricia was so so sweet as Renee, you know. I, you know, yeah, I, what, she, what she was my she was my first TV mother, mm -hmm. and I was so honored when I found out she was going to be my mom. And she was too. We we really got along well. We loved it. We really embraced the mother son. Uh, uh, relationship, although I used to more, I used to refer to it more as the uh, Oedipus complex. <laughs> but, um, but she's a Tony Award winning actress. She was so lovely, and she had the most optimistic outlook on life. And that is pretty much the antithesis of Mr. Carey, who, God, I love this man, but he was, you know, he was a cranky curmudgeon. You know, he's just this cranky old man, and and I had to earn his love. Like in the beginning, he didn't, he didn't take to me right away, and. Uh, and uh, Bob Woods was like, because I used to call him Mr. Carey, and I'd always called Bob Woods Mr. Woods. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still, to this day, call Bob M.W. Because it's M.W., Mr. Woods, right? right. And, uh, so Phil went to him one day, and he goes, what's with this kid calling me Mr. Carey? And Woods is like, no, 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 he's, he's, he's good. That's, that's respect. He's just showing respect. And then we worked together. And then um, he liked me. And so he had this, uh, there was a high-end um Chinese restaurant a couple blocks from where we shot um, on the west side, and uh, it was called Shun uh, Shun Shun Lee or something. I can't remember, but it was this really nice place. And they had a bar, and he had a, his seat at the bar. And uh, the bartender uh, was a really nice guy who um, always always knew the weather. <laughs> that was his thing. Ask mm -hmm. him the weather. Ask him the weather. And I go. I, he go. <laughs> you come with me, and I go. Yes, sir. And we go there after work, and he'd have his scotch. And I drink a little vodka and we just talk. And I, I mostly listen and let and hear his stories. So, because, you know, he worked with John Wayne, Gary Cooper, Edward G. Wright. He worked at, he's in Mr. Roberts. I mean, the stories this man had. And um, and so <clears throat> I I never said no. I always went. And we were there once and his, his, seat, his seat was taken by some tourists and he was really not happy about it. So I go, come on, we'll just, we'll just, we'll grab a table. And we're sitting at a table and I had my back to the door and he looked door, he goes, and he goes, he said something, this group came in and I turn around and there was these five. Oh, he, he made a comment. He made a sound. Like, he goes, it looks like they look like a, the Knicks, right? Because there's a group of men came in, big men. Right. I turn around, I go, well, maybe, I don't know. I mean, they're not the Knicks, but we we'll go back to our talking and, and one of them comes up to the table because he recognized Phil. Mm -hmm. And then he turns, he sees me and we're like, hey, how are you? And he goes, it was cool from Cool in the Gang. And they were all in town to do a to a concert, and they were they just happened to come in that place. It was hysterical, and they liked the show. Lucky, lucky, lucky you, because I'm a cool yeah. big fan too. Oh my too. god, yeah, right. I couldn't like, oh wow, it's so cool. <laughs> so, um, um, but we, I'd always, I'd always go to him, go with him there, and uh, like I said, mostly just listen to his stories, because that's you're not learning anything by talking, you know. So, um, uh, we had a very close relationship to the point where. Sometimes he'd be kind of cranky on set, and there was this one point. His, he's in hospital scenes. He's in a hospital bed, and he's just mad at everybody. And I'm in my mm -hmm. room. I was just in, I was down in my room reading the paper or something. I probably was working up, that, you know, a few like, some scenes later. And uh, Frank Acopolis comes down, and he goes, "Hey, will you do me a favor and go out, come up on set and talk to Phil?" Because he knew how long we how well we were getting along. And I go, mm -hmm. yeah. so I, I go up on set and. I could hear him. I could hear him just complaining and stuff. And I pop my head in the door. I go, Pa, what are you doing? Because my thing was, my character hated him, right? Because I thought he killed my sister. So I would never call him Pa, even when I found out he was my father. But off camera, mm -hmm. I called him Pa because I loved him. Then. And I go, Pa, what are you doing? He goes, hey, where are you going? Get in here. And it, his, his, his mood completely changed. Frank knew what he was doing. You know, and he got happy. And, I'm, you know, we just started, I hung out with him until they shot the scene, you know? Right. But just, just a... His wife was a lovely woman. She, I, I was honored because when he passed away, she she asked me to do a reading at the uh, at the funeral. And um, I got to tell you, you, you do a reading in front of a church filled with actors is <laughs> it's nerve wracking. But, sure. it, but it was it was a beautiful service. Um, a lot of people talk obviously about working with him. And Bob Woods had the best stories, and they saved him for last because he had so many. And he used to prank Phil. And, you know, we, I, I kept saying, cause Bob Woods made me money because we would be on that blooper show and you'd get like 800 bucks if you made that show. Mm -hmm. Woods was constantly doing stuff. So they would pick up on that, that Ed McMahon and 
and uh, Dick Clark show, you know? And so um, we'd show up on that once in a while, make a little cash. So, um, but yeah. I, loved, I loved working with him. It's a great man. Yeah, there, 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 it used to be on YouTube. There was a deleted scene file for One Life to Live, and you're in one. I, I don't know if you was in one with Bo, but I know you was with one with uh, James DePablo, who was Max. Y'all had a hospital scene with you taking this temperature or something, and you just, I don't remember, but it, it was just yeah. fun. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Bob would do a lot of things. Bob would go up in the catwalks, and like we were doing a scene once. We were like in a conference room, and, um, if I remember correctly, I think they were going to pull my 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 my, my medical license, which I was begging for because I hated being a doctor. Mm. And um, and uh, in the middle of the scene, a note comes like lower down into the scene. <laughs> I can't remember what it said, but it had something to say with about Phil. And mm -hmm. it was a bit, there was a lot of people in the scene, and we're I mean, you couldn't work. You're just laughing your ass off, and you look up, and there's woods up there. And this other time, Tim Gibbs, I mentioned before, I think his name he played Kevin. He played um, yeah, Mickey's son. He um he was outside the house and he looks down and there was a note he had to he sees and he goes to pick it up. But Woods went up earlier and he tied a little filament, little like fishing line to the note. So every time he right. go to reach for it, he'd pull on it. And they're trying to shoot this. It gives it was almost like there was a breeze. And finally he had to give up. It was just petty stuff like that, but really hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. I, I gotta say though, um, before I answer these two van questions here, um the the interesting thing about uh you guys on One Life, um you guys, y'all never called Asa, especially um, Robert. Y'all never called him Dad or you know Pops. Y'all called him Pa. The Pa. Kind of well, I think I don't know if Woods uh, or or Clint. I don't know who started that. That was way before I got there. I listen when I when I was a kid, um, I got I was a little messed up. I didn't know what I was doing, so I, I was I got kicked out of college and I was going to this community school uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Mercy College in uh, in Westchester County, and. Um, my buddy was still a senior in high school. So I'd go by his house after I was out like at noon and I'd go by his house and we'd watch One Life to Live in, in, guiding, in um, General Hospital. Mm -hmm. And so I knew these characters um, from years earlier, um, never thinking wow. I'd be on the show. Obviously, I wasn't an actor, but <clears throat> I knew these characters. So there were times I'd be on set and I'm like, oh, what am I doing here? I mean, that's Paul. But they, they would, I mean, Woods would call them that back then because they were a really popular show and they were like the, you know, they were the, the Western guys. They were the Cowboys. Oh, yeah. So it was I, Paul, and, and I just took it from Woods. But like I said, I, I would never refer to him as my father on on uh, on screen. It was just all the love was off screen. Yeah, those guys were like the Bonanza and exactly. Dallas. Yeah. Exactly. Was, they were big. They were big. That show was huge then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one fan on here, well, first of all, she said hi to both of us. Her name is Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Um, she, she, was, um, she said, what was your favorite – scene or working with best on guiding light working with well what was your favorite scene and then she said who did you enjoy working with oh him? oh surely you joke surely <laughs> um, i uh well the airplane scene is definitely one of my favorites mm -hmm. but there's a scene when i was i was i was it was my first year and um you know they would put me in these long duster jackets and like when jill when jill came on the show it was my probably my second year because when jill came on the show jill phelps my new boss she really cleaned up my character and just wanted me a little, you know, put together, more important, put together. So I'd wear these cowboy boots and these duster jackets and stuff. Anyway, I'd broken into someone's office looking for evidence on something. Mm -hmm. And while I'm in there, someone else had broken into him. And we have this fight in the dark. And it was choreographed really well. And, um, like, we're throwing all over the place. And at one point, I get he, it, it, the guy throws me on this long conference table and I'm trying to pull my, and I'm using my hands to make that squeaky sound to try to get away from the guy. And he right. grabs my duster and he's pulling me back. And then I turn around and I punch him and I get him on the sofa and the lights come on and it was Frank. And so like, what are you doing? And we hear a noise and we all go and hide and wait for who comes in next. That was, that was so much fun. Cause we had this, it was a, it was a pretty good choreographed. It wasn't really, I, I'm not describing it. It was longer than that. You know, it was a good fight. Mm -hmm. And um, again, we liked each other so much that you didn't care if the other guy was beating you up. Like it wasn't, there was no ego involved. Yeah. But, um, I could name I could name so many scenes I, were my favorite because working with Justin Dees, um, Beth Ellers and I I mean we had such great chemistry, um, and we used to we used to like have you know we argued a lot our characters and we started we used to, we, we we it was all organic but we started talking over each other mm -hmm. you know what I mean like it wasn't we weren't waiting because that's what happens in real life you know and we were we were just we felt taking it um, to a more real level and um, so she was really really good actress and so. Um, mm -hmm. um, it was such a good group, 
you know, everybody there, Sherry Stringfield, you know, like she went on a great car. Yeah. And, and like NYPD Blue before that, right? And ER and those shows were huge then. And, and you know, Zaz and, and Beverly, all of them. And, and, um, and plus we had the older gentleman, um, Larry. Um, Larry Gates, HB. Larry Gates, yeah. you know, and uh, there was, I don't know, and um, uh, Jordan. You know, like Park, it, Billy. It just, yeah. yeah, there was Maeve. Maeve yeah, <laughs> I had such a crush on Maeve, and I pushed for a storyline with her. I wanted to do the because she was a little older than me, mm. and I was pushing for that because I thought she was the most beautiful, like classy woman. And I found out after I left the show that she actually did a a storyline with a guy, a younger guy, a romantic storyline. And I'm like, what yeah. the hell? Like <laughs> that should have been me. Yeah, yeah, they paired it up with uh, a guy named Kirk McKinney who was in yeah, exactly. the hospital at the time. He was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was not happy. Um, uh, one of the I was going to ask you. Um, I don't think he worked with him, but he had a scene or two in the background. He was on there. Um, he just passed away. Uh, Jill Rogers, who was Hawk. Um, yo, yeah, of course, yes, yes, yeah. of course. He passed away. I'm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 um, of course I knew him. I don't know, I don't recall working with him. Mm -hmm. We might have, we might have, you know, because you know they did a lot of big scenes, mm -hmm. and you're not necessarily working with them, but you're all on set together. Whether it's, you know, like everyone's in black, um, black, you know, everyone's in the uh, tuxes and gowns, or, or the those the blue the blue moon was at the restaurant. Yeah, where, you know, they'd have a scene at the bar, then they cut to a table, and then they cut to here. So you know, um, I, I don't know how I didn't, I didn't have storyline with him but of course i remember the gentleman yeah he was a he was a nice cool man yeah that that was actually one of the scenes i i liked about god and like when y'all had the blue moon scene you know hamp was uh always there with the saxophone yeah. and, and yeah. jay, jay another, another one he was yeah god he was such a good man he was such a good man i remember once uh <laughs> i don't i shouldn't uh, well it doesn't matter no one cares anymore but um him and his morgan Morgan uh, England was uh, his roommate, mm -hmm. and they they were one of the few window rooms that had window a window, right. So I'd sometimes scoot over there after we were done for the day, and we'd be blowing hits out the window, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I remember one day I was in there, and 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 he was uh, Hamp was he was uh, mm -hmm. he was drinking a uh, Arizona iced tea, mm -hmm. and I just read somewhere where they said it's not good for your sperm count or something really that's what they told oh man and i say to him so i go i go hey man i don't know uh you, maybe you should be drinking that stuff they say it's better for your sperm count and he, he, he literally goes like this it's okay i don't want the weak ones anyway <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh, that makes sense <laughs> oh man but that was devastating and like nia long because nia played his his daughter yeah and um and I, I, yeah, she was dead. I mean, everybody was devastated by his loss. Yeah, he, was, he died he was so young. Guy in the show. Yeah, he died so young. You know, he. I think it was a liver or something. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was liver cancer. Yeah, he died young. And 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 so the day, like his his marriage on the show, mm -hmm. was what a great day. Um, not only uh, Roberta Flack did our show, but we had um, Gail Sayers, O.J. Anderson, um, um, what was his Martin? I can't remember his first name. Played for the Giants with Anderson. Mm -hmm. And, um, but Gail Sayers, you know, and my buddy, I grew up with my buddy noodle. I said to him, I go, look, if you were ever going to come visit me, you should come this day. And he comes down and you know what he brings? He brings a VHS of Brian's song and S Mr. Sanders signed it for him. Wow. Yeah. I thought that was clever too. You know, people bring it footballs and stuff, but he brings Brian's song. But, um, it was a very nice man, real gentleman. He was, and he had to leave, and he was, he wouldn't, he was still trying to sign, even though he had to get to the airport. It was, it was a really yeah. nice man. And then later on in my, my career, I got to work with, um, with Walter Payton. So I, I could have worked with the two best running backs in the history of the game. No yeah. offense to Jim, Jim Brown and Barry Sanders, but two of the best for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that I, I posted that episode a few weeks back about, um, and that's actually in the documentary I'm doing of special guests who came on got in light. And that's the scene with Roberta Flack when she came. Yeah. He was, I have a, did you, someone sent me recently. Oh, I think it was, um, um, who was it? I, I, I got a, a picture sent to me recently, um, from, uh, and it was a picture of me and Beth and a few others with Roberta Flack. Hmm. Oh, Steven Bergman, you know, Steven, uh, the photographer, I think Steven sent it to me. He, oh, he's, he was, yeah, he's, 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 a uh, he is on occasion still, he'll send me something just saying, I was looking through my files and he, like, he just sent me a picture of us presenting at the, the tech Emmys 
yeah. when the One Life crew, uh, the cameraman won the Emmy, and we got to present it to him, me and Lisa Pelosi. And so uh, she, he sent me a picture of that. But um, yeah, it's it's great. To, I, I love when he sends me stuff because it, it just you know floods my brain with memories. And it, and it's something you know. Thank God when pe- when you saw when you say people you know thank God um, rather it was illegal or not, but thank God for taking pictures or filming clips of behind the scenes because years later, like now, you get to look back like. Wow, good crew. And then, like, you know, like we talk about this, people yeah. who's not here with us, you know, Vince, Michael, yeah. Ev, and, yeah. and, you know, Larry. And, and you know, like like we were talking about with Vince, I mean, I, I used to call him the saxophone man because he was the only guy on the show with a ponytail, too. And, oh. and him and uh, Amelia Marshall, who played Jilly, and yeah, uh, yeah. Um, um, I just had his name, uh, David Grant. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Monty Grant. Sharp? Yeah, Monty Sharp. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all, all, Monty, all, boy, what a terrific actor he he is or was. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. And and Nia we Long, Nia yeah. Long. I mean, she just took off. I mean, Boys in the Hood, best the best man. I mean, well, she, you know, my favorite my favorite Nia Long story. I, I'd run at her. I'd run into her a few times through the years in Hollywood. But uh, my favorite story with her, she was on the show and she was just just gorgeous, gorgeous mm-hmm. woman. And I mean, still is. And um, uh, the movie had come out and I uh, hadn't seen it but I was going to go see it. And I heard there's a scene where she's topless. <clears throat> so I, I probably told you this story, but I went, I went to her one day at work. I go, guess where I'm going today? And she goes, where I'm going, I'm going to see the movie. And she looks at me, she goes, well, come on in here and I'll save you seven fifty. dollars But she, she made the joke. It was pretty hysterical. That's, you know, I mean, I mean, no, no offense to you when I say this, but I am surprised when you say that because, um, I used to wonder, like, you know, movies like Boys in the Hood with Ice Cube and them where it's kind of hood-like and violent. It's like, I wonder who on Guy in Life would be the one to go watch that movie other than Neil Long. Well, I went I went to see Nia's performance for sure, mm-hmm. you know, because um, I loved her and, and and I got to work with her when she first came on the show. Um, and so uh, <clears throat> I was, I just, I just went to support her. I, yeah, it was a great, it was a great movie. It was such a moving movie. But uh, I really didn't. I knew what I had an idea what it was about, but mm. I know I probably wasn't the target audience. But that's okay. It, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I forgot to uh, say this. Um, one fan, Mr. Terrell, had you brought up Sherry earlier. Um, you remember Mulaney, who was Elaney on the show? Of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Another what a career she she yeah. left us and well I left before her I think but went on to a great career. I I, yeah, I ran into her a few times through the years too. Yeah. Beautiful, gorgeous woman. It's very and the sweetest. She's married to the same guy, Peter. They've been married for since back then. We I was at her wedding, like, and we went to we all went to Ohio for her wedding, and that's where Jocelyn met her husband Ted, because Ted is cousins with Milan with, with Milani. Yeah. Um. I mean, with um, what's her name? Um, Elaine. No, no, but her um, real name. Um, um M- Milani Kenna. Kenna Caritas. Kenna Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. And so um, we all went to that wedding, which was a blast. But um, mm-hmm. but they're still together, which is freaking great you know because you don't see that all the time but um uh she was a i just felt bad for her because she had to do that damn accent all the time <laughs> like she probably yeah. regret- <laughs> <laughs> you know i i learned something about about that because um she had the accent and i got a movie with her somewhere around here on dvd she did a movie with samuel L. jackson talking regular yeah and and i was like she doesn't have the accent. She's not. I was like, "What happened with that?" I I, I didn't mm. I didn't know that was the ad. That's movie. good. That's good acting, then, right? Yeah. yeah she had that, but she, had a, she was on the show for years with uh, the guy from Mash, right? They were veterinarians or something. Father daughter veterinarians. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember the name of it, but um, it went for a while, and then she did a NCI or, or CI, CSI. Yeah, CSI New York. New York. Yeah. 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 I, I, I I'm just getting flashbacks. I I, I still remember. You know, I, I think I told you this before, but um, a buddy of mine's the first time I saw you was it, it was a '92 episode, and you know how when the show would end, sometimes y- y'all cast photos would come up for the yeah. end credits. They, they, they would do that when the show was short. Yeah, and I remember watching. I was like, "Dang, you know, she's on CSI and Neil Long, and you know, and all these people like uh, Peter Simon and and Jordan mm-hmm. Clark, you know, all these." Um, um, Gene Carroll, who was Nadine, you know, all these, all these mm-hmm. people and you too, like all, all you guys it was just, it was a group, it was a good group of people. And, you know, like I said before, um, what dreaming about guy like too, is you guys had like a balanced cast. Cause it was a good group of people, 
Wild Life to Live had it, but that show changed cast a lot. Like people came and went all the time on that show, but God, Life always had a good balance of people that didn't leave a lot. On yeah, and they had strong. They had strong. Well, One Life had it too, but they had strong family. Um, you know, grounded families you could you know write for. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bowers and whoever else. I was just you know you know one sign when you get on a show like that. Like when I found out I was getting a sister, you're like, oh man, they're giving me family. That's a good sign. You know, they're not they're not going to fire me this week. Cause they're expanding, you know, and, and when I was on one life and I found out I was going to be a Buchanan, I'm like, I guess my job is kind of safe for now. <laughs> they're giving me a family, you know? So, cause I'm that guy, like my characters, I didn't ever even really thought of this, but I've come on these shows as the lone guy who doesn't know anybody yeah, at all, you know, except like one person, you know, like yeah, Mallet knew one person. I can't remember her name now. She was the uh, she was the DA. She brought me in to investigate something. Oh, um, uh, Lisa Derecki. Yeah, she's a good actress, and she she was in Deer Hunter. She was one of Meryl Streep's girlfriends in the like in her wedding party and stuff. But mm -hmm. she she like she knew my character, and I came to work for her. One life, I just was in a bar, and Erica walked in, and you know, and of course, uh, Young and the Restless. I was just coming to town to kill people. <laughs> Yeah, it's ironic, you know. You, yeah. They brought the, they brought the kill on already in advance. Like, well, we yeah. already. <laughs> but I remember um, the first story. I mean, the first two storylines on tape that I had. The first one, um, he was with the Daniel St. John storyline, which led to him getting killed off in '92. Um, uh, Wait, uh, what's David, that? David. David Bishens, he was David. Uh, oh, David, oh, Daniel oh yeah, 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 I almost, yeah. well, Zaz got to shoot him. We fought over that because I wanted to shoot him. Yeah. We both were like, and because we, we were both going around like this together, but mm -hmm. he, got, he got the, uh, he got, and, you know, character wise, he should have been able to shoot him. I just want to shoot him because I didn't like him. He wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> I, you know, I've, I talked about this last on, uh, maybe it was Locker, maybe it was you, I can't remember, but he played a doctor and mm -hmm. he turned into an asshole and um, they killed him. They made him a killer because he was hard to work with. He complained all the time and he was a Juilliard guy and he had to let you know that before he even met him. And, uh, really? Mm. So they, when they, when they were going to kill him, I'm like, I'll shoot him. <laughs> and, uh, Zaz got to do it. But, but, you know, it, but it's interesting that you, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're saying that, but, but it's interesting. Cause it's like, again, when you watch this show, it's, it's nice to know everybody gets along, but you you never know like who was the one a hole on that show. And yeah, you just mentioned well, that, that, was, that was the lesson for everybody because they they look that was just good casting it was good. They we had great writers and we had great casting and good um, a good boss and mm -hmm. and that had to be Jill and she had a she just wanted a happy family and he was not happy and he was the one guy that would stir up trouble on set over such petty stuff and. Um, and so they're like, we're not dealing with this anymore. Hey, let's make him a killer. They'll take two in the chest. It's mm. probably problem solved. And it was. Yeah. He was my, I was roommates with him when I first got on there. Really? Yeah. I got mm. out of there as fast as I could. Yeah. Um, Amy just asked uh, if you had a favorite Harley and Mallet scene. And I got to add real quick. Um, the other thing I remember too with you was, Jenna Bradshaw, Fiona Hutchinson, who years later I went to One Life together. But yeah. you know, y'all, it was a scene where you were you you was you was undercover and you was kind of making out with her, but you was with Harley. But that was one of my other scenes about you. Y'all was you was working yeah. with Fiona a lot. And then years later, I thought, like, wait a minute, they both on One Life now. Like she's Gabriella again. Yeah. She was yeah, on yeah, she, had, she was on there before. Yeah. Well, with her my I've I've told the story before too, like, you know. We had a we had a really great crew, and you you know you're with you with everyone every day, you know a lot of days, mm -hmm. you know you're, you get storyline. You're there a lot. You're there for a lot of the day, and I got along great with them. And you know nicknames for everybody, and we just we'd hang out, we'd socialize more. I'd socialize more with the crew than the actors, and and um, really good guys. And we had this one camera named cameraman named Jerry, and he was an old, a little older. He was older than me anyway, but he was a good guy. And he actually we were from around the same area, northern Westchester, and uh, but he was a he was a funny guy and he kind of expanded his, his job description. <laughs> like he would do things that he's not supposed to be doing. Just take it easy. Right. Stay behind the camera. Mm -hmm. So the first time, um, Jenna was coming on the show, Fiona was coming on the show. I was at the, the way I remembered, I was at, I was in, it was an airport scene. Right. And I was, it was, it was starting a new storyline. So I was, whatever I was finished, I was walking away and I look 
and I see her walk by. And my and the the act the the act the um direction was I I'm like trying to think who that was. I sit down on the carousel, Jenna, right? That was all I had to say. Right. So um I, I see her go by, I look, you know, they want to get this in one take, and this is one word, this is easy, right? Mm. I'm thinking, I sit down on the carousel, like I'm trying to place her, and Jerry goes blow his camera and he goes, Jenna. <laughs> Feed me my line like I forgot it because he thought I forgot my line. And I just went, Jenna. And then I look at him, they go cut. And I look at him, I go, What are you doing? He's like, Sorry, sorry. Yeah. But yeah, she was great. She's a lovely woman and such mm-hmm. a professional. And uh, I enjoyed working with her. I don't remember all that stuff. I don't remember making out with her, but I'm sure it was fun. Um, but to answer the question, yet, yeah, um, I mean, I, I there'd be so many scenes I would think were, I enjoyed with 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 Beth because you know we worked together so much, and um, but this up at the cabin like there was these scenes and I mean, you might have sent me because I was getting you know since doing these shows I've gotten some scenes sent to me mm-hmm. or you know, like a YouTube thing and you've sent me some stuff and Alan has and um, and uh, but it, and I ended up seeing the scene again I had a broken leg at the time and I I I, I kind of was I was trying to find her she was hiding from me and. I started using my detective work to track down where she was. And I think Morgan ended up, I think Dylan ended up telling me where she was. He did. And so I go up to the cabin. And so those scenes um, were, were really, really fun because we started really just at each other. And then all of a sudden we're like together. And yeah, but the cat also training at the Academy. And we had that group of uh, actors that were in her class. Right. We had a lot of fun with them. They were, there were some fun actors and uh, just good people. We, we, we really enjoyed that storyline. I remember um, emailing you about that because I remember going through some episodes I found from early 92 and another actor was playing Mallet briefly. And I was like, so did Mark really break his foot? I mean, because you were hurt your foot because he was filled in for he filled in for you for a day and you came back still in the crushes. Well, you, was like, yeah, that 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 was what happened was um, I didn't hurt my foot. I, I broke my leg in three places and tore all the ligaments and. Like I, when I was in the emergency room, uh, an intern came up and he says, you know, I've read about this injury. I've never seen it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Just set my leg. It was awful. A couple of surgeries. I, the, I, I was in so much, I mean, the pain. And so I couldn't, I, what it happened on a Friday night. So I called my boss Saturday mm-hmm. and told her what happened. So they thought I would be coming to work the next week, just in the cast. So, but I would have to miss, I did have to miss a day because my foot was so swollen. I had to keep it elevated before they could do surgery. Right. And so they hired this actor. And so what they did is they had Peter Simon say, guess who came in the ER last night? Mallet, he broke his leg. So now this actor, we find he has got to work. So he's got to do a scenes with crutches playing me. Right. And then I had the surgery and um, I went back. I went back too soon. I was dying to get back and I didn't want, I felt I didn't want to let anyone down. And I went back too soon and um, I, I did this, I did the day and I felt okay. And I went back, I went out to dinner with a, you know, a few of the crew and, and, uh, and then I went home and I had the, one of the worst nights of my life. Like, cause I, they were giving me morphine and stuff, you know, and I had to sweat all that stuff out and it was my whole body. I mean, I just felt awful. Yeah. And, um, but got through it and then I did, but I just had to work for the next, you know, three months with crutches, which I got very adept at. Mm. Um, and uh, and again, I was lucky that they were cool. You know, they 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 didn't replace me. They were, you know, thank God I was you know, able to keep going because it's happened to me. I broke my leg on Secret Life. I mean, on my arm. I broke my arm in half. I had a motorcycle accident. I broke it in all, in half. Wow. And they they just wrote it in the story. They didn't make a big deal out of it, but they didn't replace me or anything. And I broke my ribs when I was on. I broke a rib when I was on uh, Young of the Restless. Like. I mean, just crazy stuff. I you hurt yourself a lot on some shows. Yeah, I just keep getting yeah. injured. It's hard to work when you're in pain. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, you know, man, I, I, I got to tell you, Mark. You know, both, both times talking with you has been a pleasure. I mean, of course, I always tell people I always learn something new. But like I said, I mean, of course, I told you before. See, my mother was a huge. Yeah, I meant to ask you at the beginning of this. How was your mother? She's good. I mean, she's at work now, like she is, and um, her birthday is on the 29th this month. All right. Well, why don't you, if you want, let's call, you know, write me and I'll call her. If okay. you want, I mean, you know, I'll, I'd love yeah, to say happy birthday. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll just reach out to me and give me her number, right? Okay. Um, and, and one thing I gotta say too is, um, I was a huge. I ended up being a Mallet fan because when you joined, you know, I'm like, 
what is an AC and what is a mallet? Mallet yeah. is like, I, I think of a garden tool, and I'm like, yeah, or a, a croquet, it? like croquet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and they calling you by your last name. I mean, it's like what is yeah. you know? I mean, well, Jerry, I, I, I always got the comparison to MC Hammer. <laughs> like that's that's like they go, what were you named after MC Hammer? And uh, <laughs> but what it was was because it was I thought it was kind of clever because um, Anthony Camaletti, mm -hmm. Tony. Because my, you know, Julie, uh, J Jocelyn called me Tony, and um, so Anthony Camaletti, AC, and then just shortened it to Mallet because I was in the witness yeah. protection. Plan. I was, I was hiding from the mob. So I was yeah. a New York cop, and they were after me or something. And so Jocelyn, like, Jocelyn was so gorgeous. I mean, she was just so yeah. even today, you know. I, I haven't talked to her yet, but she, she is so. Mm. She's, she's such a lovely. I mean, we. I what I hated is that she moved to St. Louis years ago because for her husband because um, we we were very good friends, and she was still in the business and. She would come by my apartment um, on days she had auditions, and we'd run her stuff just last minute, just mm -hmm. to kind of fine tune it and stuff. And and um, and Ted's a great guy, and uh, I, I don't know his her daughters. I don't know. I might have met them when they were very little, but um, um, I adore that woman. She, she's a she's a really good person. Yeah, yeah. I have that. Um, I got two questions I didn't ask you last time. The first one is um. um if you weren't an actor, I mean, you have you have you have had a good life. You've done so much. What would you have been doing if you never acted before? Would you be singing? I mean, is there a singing career going through to happen with you right now? You know, I do I do uh, I audition for voiceovers and stuff, and I had to pass on one the other day. It was a cartoon because it's like this guy's got to be able to sing, and I'm like, well, I'll see you later. I uh, listen. I have such respect and um, for singers. I, I think it's such a gift. You you carry your instrument with you everywhere you go, and. You know, it's just, it's such a gift. I wish I could sing. I can't sing a lick. I mean, I will anyway, just to annoy my girlfriend. I sing to my dog. But um, no, I, you know, it's funny. I was in construction and I didn't, I knew that wasn't the way to go through, you know, it's just too, my body was hurting so badly in my twenties and, and you can't get ahead that way. And I just knew there was more out there than staying in my town and, you know, mm -hmm. swinging a hammer. So um, I took a, I took a risk and I was blessed that it paid off, but um. I, that's a good question. I, it's kind of scary because I didn't know. I thought, maybe, let me just try this, and because it looks like it's fun. And my mom, my parents are from Ireland, and my mom was a stage actress growing up in Ireland, so she had it in her blood, and and she loved that I. Um, she was worried for me, but she loved that I took on this career and had some success, you know. But um, you know, I used to I used to visualize that I would be the shortstop for the Yankees, but you know that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. But um I, I thank God this worked because I had no idea what I would have done. <laughs> and I can totally understand what you were saying about construction because when I first went to college before I got into <clears throat> and writing like I do now, um, I took construction because I like building things. I did it when I was in high school, but math is not my strength. And the class I had in my first year of college, you know, I've had I've had instructors. There are there are teachers that will help you and are nice about that. This this instructor I had was not that nice, he didn't help a lot. He was one of the people where, like, if you join, you gotta know this material, and I didn't know that. Mm. Um, like he, like he literally asked me when I said, "Well, I went to high school and I learned." He was like, "Oh no, this ain't, this ain't like high school. This is totally different." I'm like, "Okay," he just asked me from everybody. But um, I remember taking that class, and it was like a blueprint class. He gave me us all like a blueprint of how to do this, how to do that, and I'm like, "No, I don't. Yeah. I, I, I'm not getting it." Like I said earlier. I got heist phobia. So me climbing up something like a building trying to yeah, get yeah. hell no, no, that, that would not work for me. Yeah. And I just said, no, I'm just going to, I left that class with a D and I just said, no, mm -mm. I'm just going to, I found out later you can take photography and film. I'm just going to do that construction. That's, that's not for me. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I, I didn't was even at the level of blueprints. I was just, you know, I was just a grunt, you know, <laughs> You you know, and I tell you, we were. It seemed like every year you're in the you're working in an attic in the summer and on a roof in the winter. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. why are we doing this? It's freezing out, right? And, uh, <laughs> it was so hard to get out of bed, man. Yeah. You put in you put in you put in ten hour days and you work six days a week. It's 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 crazy, you know. And you, at the time, it's kind of you think you're cool and all that, but my my body was breaking down. I got I learned some skills. I built furniture. I like to build stuff, but uh, and I learned it all because of that, but. It's a tough way to make a living. Yeah, yeah, it is, and you know, they they, they make good money, but that's that's not for me. And you. Well, it depends who's making the money. You know, the grunts don't make good money. You know, I mean, it's maybe the contractors are doing okay, but you know, I wasn't at that level, nor did I want to be.
when I was leaving to become, when I wanted to leave with a one, I got a one-way ticket in 1987 to come out here and try acting. I scrambled. I worked my tail off for like a month. I was doing all my own, like there's all these projects. Mm-hmm. Like I redid this woman's bathroom. I sheet rocked this, this guy's basement. Like I was doing whatever I was painting with this one guy. I was doing whatever I could do just to, uh, just to make as much cash as possible. And what kind of music do you listen to? I didn't ask you this last time. Um, I, uh, you know, I just put on, like, I have Sirius XM. Okay. You know, the, so I just, I put on the spectrum. It's kind of like alternative, adult <laughs> alternative stuff. Um, I don't like country music, really. There's a couple of singers I like, like Zach Brown. I've mm-hmm. seen him. He's buddies with my buddy, my buddy. And so I've seen him in concert about five times. An amazing show. And we've, we've been on stage, too, like outside, backstage. And really good guy. And um, I like that Chris Stapleton. I think he's got a powerful voice. Right. But, we listen to John Prine. You know, we get Alexa to play John Prine, and um, I, I'm a huge Beatle fan. But my stuff and my girlfriend, we kind of lean back. She's huge Jackson Brown. So with Eagles, you know, I, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I got to get out of here, you know, and, and, and I try to listen to more up-to-date stuff. And But then it's so great just to listen to Frank Sinatra or the Rat Pack, and I like classical, you know. Okay. I love reggae. Love mm-hmm. it. Love it. You know, Big Mountain and – Chris Marley. And Ziggy. Yeah, I got a spot for jazz and and classical too. Um, Disney did a movie called Fantasia back in the day, and watching yeah. that just you know classical, I I adore. But I'm an yeah. oldie, I'm an oldie but goodie guy too. I don't. Did you, did you see Soul? I have not seen that yet. People would tell me I need to go check that. Well, out. Well, you know we're we're huge fans of uh, we watch Colbert every night, and uh, mm-hmm. John Baptiste is such a lovely man, and he's such a talent, and it's so much fun to watch him just collect all these he's got a you know a, a, an oscar nod but he got the golden globe he got the um uh, he got another one i, I can't remember his, uh, it's not the sag yet but he got another critic's choice or something like that yeah but it's really great to see his success um and his music is uh he's ridiculously talented well i gotta i gotta tell you man um um before i before i let you go um and next uh, April the second, I think is next week or the following week on um, that Friday. Well, that's when I'm going to have part one of the guy in life story, the documentary I did on the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have it out. Um, you're in it and a few others. Um, basically, like what we're doing now, the interview I've done with everybody. I did like a like a voiceover, right. and it's a bunch of clips and the history of the show. Uh, Erna Phillips, who start to create the show, I talk about that. Uh, I'm kind of excited about it. I hope I hope people. It's fantastic, like- man! Congratulations. Thank you. How do, how do I see that? I'm gonna send I'm gonna send you a link. Yeah, um, I'm going to I'm going to have it on YouTube, maybe on uh, Vimeo as well. But it's going to be out there. Um, I was supposed to have it out last year, but my my the, the last time I got, which is over there, it's old. I've had it since 2012, and it's slow, and I had editing problems, but. Right. I'm just getting it done now and I'm going to have it part one and part two when we all start next Friday at 7 PM. So I'll, I'll send you the link so you can check it out. Great. You know. Yeah. I'd love to. That'd be great. That'll just blow my brain with memories. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think, I think you enjoy it. You know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff in there. Um, I don't, I don't do a lot of narration, um, but I narrate a little bit, but you know, you and Tina and, and um, yeah, Tina. Jared, Oh, I love Tina. You didn't even talk about Tina. God, I love her. She she talked about you when I first interviewed her. You know, um, she she had great to talk about, great stuff to talk about. You. We we she's a lovely one. We got along extremely well. Again, I socialized with her too. One one night we were because she you know she didn't need that job, and uh, we were in her apartment on Park Avenue one night. It was like four. It was me, her, I think Lisa Connor, who was a uh, started out as a PA, then be you know became an assistant and. She was a producer. She's worked. She writes. She's a writer on soaps. Um, <clears throat> it was her, and I don't remember who else was there. Another few people, maybe a couple of other actors, and we're just having all this fun. And uh, so she goes, oh, "You know what we're going to do?" And she went over and she she took a like a three hundred dollar bottle. It was like a Rothschild wine and just popped it open. And we're like, <laughs> "Not for us. We don't do that for us." And she's like, "No, this is what it's for." And we sat there drinking this you know ridiculously expensive wine and. Yeah, she's in love. I, I socialize with her a bunch. My sister would come down and visit, and we go out, and she's just a really fun, nice person. Yeah, she is. I, I yeah. enjoy talking. I've had her like three times on here, and I, I enjoy talking to her both. I got both her books, and um, uh, the other thing I wanted to put in the, the 
the documentary I did as well is um, a tribute to all those who passed away. And Michael and Bev is, I did, you know, I sent you the clip of, of Michael, but, you know, I did a big thing on him and Bev and a few others because their, their passings was really, you know, just, yeah. I, I really wanted to have that in there. But um, I hope you like it when you, when you see it. Um, and, um, you know, be anything you want to ask me beforehand or afterwards you see, just let me know. Um, before I let you go, um, I got two clips I'm going to show you real quick. But anything you want to say to Guy and Light fans or One Life or fans of you in general? But you got a lot of fans on here that's blowing up my comment section now. <laughs> well, I got to say, I don't know if you have good taste. <laughs> um, no, I just would say thank you. I mean, I, I never had a bad day working in daytime. I had fun every day. And um, if, it was, if it was Guiding Light, which was without a doubt one of my favorite jobs uh, because of the character being Malik, Mm -hmm. I was so cool. I won all my fights. You know what I mean? Like I had the cool things to say, you know, I mean, once in a while, someone got the best of me and like, you know, Kimberly, Mindy poured a, at least once she poured like a pitcher of beer on me. Like I'd have all these things happen, but it was just such a fun, strong character. And the, the, the viewers were incredibly supportive. And, um, I wasn't, I wasn't really big on, um, once a year they would have like a, um, get together at the Marriott, you know, Midtown and viewers would come and there'd be like a fest, you know, I avoid the word fan. That's why I'm using it. And, uh, and so, um, I didn't go to it and, um, it wasn't any disrespect. I just, you know, I didn't need any adulation. And I felt that a lot of the actors were going there just for their own good. And they're also, they're also trying to sell things like CDs and stuff at these things, you know, just trying to make money. And I'm like, these people, God bless them. They spend money to fly to New York and you're trying to get more money out of them. You know, it's, it's not right. So, yeah. but one year Jerry was going to host it and he asked, he goes, will you go this year? And I'm like, of course I'll go, you know, for you. <laughs> and, um, we, when we showed up, um, it had just begun and he announced me and Beth and the response we got was, uh, overwhelming. I couldn't believe it. And we ended up having such a fun day. We all had microphones. So I could right. just, I was commenting on everybody's, whatever they were saying. We were just, we had so much fun. And that, when, it, when, um, when I was on One Life, they would do that. And I, I went to that and um, Erica had her own group of women that would get together with her. And they got, of course, they started to like me because I worked with her. And so then they asked me to come to their um, hotel room uh, like afterwards for a drink and just to, you know, they want to ask me some questions. So I mm -hmm. said, sure, I'll do it. So I go there and it was like, it's probably like three or four women, five women. And we had a nice, I probably stayed half an hour, an hour, whatever and left. Well, the next year they were like, well, we know how to get them here. So they had, they had the vodka and they had some food and I go and now it's like some husbands and it's a, it's an event in itself. And we did that a few years in a row and it was so much fun. And, and it wasn't like, I, I didn't need the adulations. I just, it was fun to answer their questions right? to, you know, let them have a moment in that world, you know, that they love so much. And, and, you know, we'd go and do a lot of events for like the two events I worked with a, a, a decent amount was um, Ronald McDonald house, which was, you know, do some of these golf tournaments. And uh, I love that cause and also um, make a wish. Right. And so we drive up to, um, we did one in Jersey once, but we'd go up to Massachusetts um, for make a wish events. And it was, it was like a, a big dance, you know, and, and, so you're out there meeting and greeting and, 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 and dancing with viewers and stuff. And, uh, but it, it was, you'd make a lot of money. And I had this group of women who would raise money and make a wish for a child in my name. Wow. And then I'd get something sent to me and I'm like, oh my God, that is so generous. And these are, I mean, really lovely women. And so I started saying, look, let's go out to dinner, you know? And so, um, they'd come to New York or even when I was in LA, they, they, I, they'd come to my house. And, uh, and, and, and just, you know, just to pay back because they're really nice people and they, they were generous and they gave it, they gave it darn, you know, yeah. so there's a lot of good that comes out of working in daytime and any, any part of the business, but especially daytime, because I've said this before, like, you know, you're, you're in their living room, you know, and they don't think twice of approaching you at the airport. Like if you're big, if you're Tom Cruise, you're so huge on that screen. They're not going to walk up to you necessarily, but they're going to walk up to people in daytime, um, and uh, because you're, you're more accessible, you know, and they feel they know you. And uh, I, I always I never had a problem with that. I always thought it was it was awesome, you know. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, watching watching you guys, I, I used to have an interest to want to do soaps. And I think I told you this before. I mean, I, I did a play in my school and I, I just 
I was in the middle of a, of a my line and I just I couldn't pronounce this word and I I, I froze and I'm like, but how do they do that? And so it's because you know like, I have so much dialogue and you only have like one take. It's like mm. especially if you have a, like a word or a sentence you can't get right. But I guess y'all, that's when y'all got rehearsal time. I guess to kind of get yeah, and we, you know, but also you know we would we would say, can I take can I change this? Can I write you know like cross this out and say this word and because it didn't fit your character or, or maybe you just had an issue with that word, whatever it was. And they were pretty, mm. they were pretty cool with that. Letting, Cause you know, you, you, you kept the integrity of the scene. You just had to tool with it a little bit. Um, yeah. And we made cuts almost every rehearsal, you know, and uh, because it was, the show was too long, you know, things like that. And so there, there was always a lot of um, what was cool was it wasn't just them telling you what to do. There was a collaboration you know, yeah. with the actor and the director and the writers and everything and, and, and just to make it make it work the best. So but, you had so you had William Bell on YNR, right? And then you yeah. had Calhoun and Joe Fern Pelts on GO. Yeah. And I guess you got to work with Bruce Berry, the director on GO too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was up at his cabin. He had a great log cabin up in the Catskills. He's a great guy. Yeah. Great guy. I remember I haven't talked with him, but I remember watching something with him and another director y'all had named uh her name was Joanne something. Joanne Sedgwick. Sedgwick. Yeah. Joanne Sedgwick. Yeah. She was tough as nails. We, <laughs> but thankfully we got along famously. She, we loved each other, but she would be, she came down on actors. Uh, you mentioned uh, one earlier, I won't say his name again, but he had trouble with lines and mm-hmm. she was on him when he came in the rehearsal hall, she'd take his script away. She was know wow. your lines. And in there, you're writing stuff down, you can look, but she would be on him and he hated her, I think, for it. And she didn't like him, but she wasn't wrong. You know, you got one job, really. No, you got two jobs. Show up on time, know your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had, I think, so you had Jill again on One Life and then Gary Tomlin. Yeah, I don't like him. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I have nothing to say good about him at all. Um, okay. Jill and I were close. He, he, he's a con man. He's a liar. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was, I was, I, I was, I lucked out because Bonnie, Bonnie Hunt called again and she got me out of my contract. I didn't, I was so happy with Erica and Erica protected me because Tomlin was like ruining my character. Mm. And uh, I literally had, I got these little, you know, those little letters, stickers, you know, and I put them on my dressing room door and I wrote Vicky's bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> That was on my dressing room door. <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, here, here are these two clips I was talking about. This is one with you, Beth, and Jerry. Uh, J- you, Jerry had a very funny line to say to you two on this one. Here, here it is. Hey, well, maybe Ross isn't as mad as he was on the phone last night. Okay, maybe we messed up and Jenna took us by surprise. But we'll fix it. It's not the end of the world. Harley. You're a rookie. You're expected to mess up. I am supposed to know better. I am supposed to be able to... What you're supposed to know is the difference between undercover and under the covers. So, my little lovebirds, while you're out stealing kisses at some no-tell motel, a known jewel thief is stealing jewelry from Alexandra Spalding. You didn't think that it was... No, you didn't think! This relationship of yours is interfering with your job, and I won't have it! <laughs> undercover, under. Wow, I love that man so much. <laughs> so funny because I promise you, after that scene, we were laughing and hugging. You know, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I I wrote that once for a short film I did. I I, I gotta check if I added it. when he says that. You know, undercover, under the covers. Yeah. <laughs> It's brilliant, That's just right? Funny. <laughs> and you know he's just yeah. ruling when he read that line. <laughs> That's really mm-hmm. funny. I mean, when I saw that, I was like, I, I know they, I know they had to laugh when they said cut. I know they had to. <laughs> yeah, we laughed a lot when they All said right, cut. In the second clip, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and here's a second clip I got, which is actually your first episode. Be honest. I know you were into 
shot. Look, will you find another apartment, yeah. buddy? Look, will you find another apartment, buddy? Forget the countdown to three. Not now. I wake up in the hospital. Not now. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've had enough surprises for one evening. Now, if you'll excuse me. I've written a note, a letter. I'm working up to a book. You're the one? A letter. What, you think I was just wandering by? Working up to a book. You're the one? I think I just wandered. No. Bye. That guy. Come through. That guy. How do I know you're legit? You don't. I don't know. The name is. Who's your publisher? Cooper Wolf. How'd you get my name? Name's Cooper Wolf. How'd you get my name? What's the purpose of your library? To make money. Oh, I mean, I think it's a good story and I could tell it well. Make money. I mean, I think it's a good story and I could tell it well. I don't know. I don't Come know. by my office tomorrow. After you called me and roused me out Come of bed tonight? You were in bed this morning. After you called me and roused me out of bed tonight? You were in bed this morning. You know, I was in bed with. I was in bed with uh, the woman from uh, the VA, the woman from uh, from Deer Hunter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's ironic, you know. I remember you telling me that when you first joined that show, they wanted Mindy with Mallet, and it's like y'all y'all yeah. were so close in those early years when you first joined. It's like I didn't know that. Yeah, it's just yeah, we were we were totally supposed to. Be, we had a lot of storyline together, but it just never. I think we might have kissed. I don't know, but we never. It never really went anywhere. Um, um, but you know, you. I forgot about that. You sent me that. I had. I. Had, I did not remember my first day. I did not remember that scene at all, which is frightening <laughs> considering it was my audition scene. You know what I mean? It was all those things. Prob I mean, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But uh, I had no yeah. memory of that at all. But I liked it. <laughs> I know it's. I shouldn't say that. Maybe, but yeah. I liked that scene. That kid. That guy was great, I right? The way he let me just rough him up and stuff, like. You need mm -hmm. that stuff. It takes it takes everybody. It's really cool, man. And and, and it, it's always fun. You know, I always get a kick when I watch that scene because you know that that was a time when you joined that show. That was a time when it was you know there was no cell phones, there was no YouTube. That was when VCRs I was out, and you had cable. You know, th this is showing my age too. You had cable. It was on like a rectangular box with very little channels, and like pay per view yeah. of wrestling. Like that was. The early 90s that was just mm, yeah and then and, yeah. and seeing you guys on there i mean that was long hair and 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 the, the outfit i mean you, you wore black and boots a lot on that show like you said earlier <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah they had a specific look designed for me the, my first year i no one said shit to me so i would i'd wear like an undershirt underneath my open collar thing i never wore a tie i just did my thing and when joe came in she's like we're, we're cleaning that guy up he looked terrible <laughs> And I was like, no, leave me alone, you know. And she's like, and, but she was right. And we yeah. became, were still very good friends. And, and, um, um, but she was right. And I, I did enjoy the changes. My clothes were great. You, well, at least you didn't have, I mean, you, you had it in your last year, but I was going to say, at least you didn't have a beard at that time, but you grew one in your last year. Oh, struggle. you know what it was? Was, um, we had, like, well, I was dating Ellers. We ended up dating in real life. And, and so we had gone away somewhere. And I grew a beard when we were away. We had like a couple weeks off or something. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, begged them to let me keep the beard and Joe was like you can keep it for like this show or a couple of shows or something and um so I had it and then I think one of the scenes Jerry uh came in he goes shave your beard like because he was my boss <laughs> and he was the AG the uh, you know the DA so he uh his character told me shave so I don't I don't know how long I had it but I it was just fun to play because I've never gotten to do anything like that in my young yeah. career yeah 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 the beard <laughs> Oh man, Mark! Thanks again for coming back, man. I've yeah, always... brother, I, I was flattered you wanted me back. You know, um, I, there, there's some reasons why I started this new show. Um, why I stopped doing the last one, kind of for selfish reasons. But um, this new show I did, I just said, well, I'm gonna have some different guests come on, but I'm also reach back out to those who I had a good connection with, like you and Tina and some and a few others. And I was like, man, I gotta get Mark back on here because everybody talked about. Mark and as you see, my 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 show is different. <laughs> your, your dog. He just came in. Yeah, she just came in. <laughs> Where is she? Yeah, say hi. Hey man, how you doing? Where are you, baby girl? Hi, baby. 
Is that a, is that a, that's a boy or girl? That's female. See, Sadie. She's a she's okay. a COVID rescue. We got her last mm. May. Good girl. Oh, Sadie, like uh, like like the song Sadie from the sexy Spanish. Sadie. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> we just well in our neighborhood. There's this this woman this this woman and I think her son um, their dog is ill, so they they pull it around in a cart. Mm. And her name is her name is Penny Lane. And when we met her, we're like, "This is sexy Sadie and Penny Lane." So we're starting our own <laughs> Beatles fan club. She, um, she, she gonna have some puppies? This one? Yeah. No, no, she's a rescue. She's uh, she's fixed, and she um, I would okay. I fixed all my dogs, and um, she uh, she was found wandering the desert. She's got scars all over her body, and she just mm. uh, it's we're amazed that her her personality is so great because she has no issues. You know, you think yeah. she'd be afraid of things, and she's just a really happy dog, and so happy to have a family. Yeah, you know, it, it, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure by now, um, Zyla passed away, but I, I wonder if her and and your dog would have got along. <laughs> she loves every. My other dogs were were not like this, but she loves everyone. We go on, we go on walks. All the dogs bark at her. She just looks at them, going, "Hi, I'm Sadie." She doesn't doesn't bark back. She's like, "What? What are you? What are you barking at?" The sweetest dog. It's crazy, man. Mm -mm -mm. Mar but Mar, thanks again for coming back to my show, man. Uh, again, I enjoyed talking with you. It's been a blast. And yeah, um, brother. please, please come again and uh, real, real soon. Coming back. Yeah, come no, I, invite me. I'll come back. I, it's fun, and it, it just you know it, to see these clips and you, you know you're asking the right questions. It just ma makes me you know remember more than I thought I did. Yeah, you know. And don't forget, um, don't forget to give me your mom's number. And you know, the 29th. It was that what you said. Yeah. All right. Okay. And okay, bro. I'll also send you a, a link so you can see yeah. the GL story. Yeah. And, um, and and please, when you can, please reach out to Kim and Frank because I got I got to do something with you with with you and them as well at some yeah. point. As well, I've been I've been you know we got back. To, I hadn't talked to Kimberly in in, in years. You know, mm -hmm. and so we're we're back in conversation. You know, and, and talking again. And actually, her and my girlfriend are our friends on Facebook now. You know, and so it's it's um it's it's nice to get that. You know, I've I've always stayed in touch with Frank. I mean, we've gone. A long time without talking, but then you know we you know you get to make a call or something. But um, yeah, um, it's nice to, have to be back in, with Kimberly. She's a, uh, I mean, we always got along great. Yeah. Well, Margaret, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. And, and sorry for the mix-up early. I I just couldn't I couldn't for some reason I couldn't remember if he was in L.A. or well, New York. I was like, where is he at? But yeah. I always get the time frame wrong sometimes when yeah. someone's in California. And I'm yeah. Here. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Okay, Thanks. brother. Thanks again, man. You enjoyed and thank the you, everybody who watched. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. See you, man. Take it easy. You too. All right. Well, guys, thanks again for checking it out. Uh, it's like a buddy, my new show. You remember Prime Memory Best from uh, PE's like, podcast and my other channel, Souls Path. That's where I upload all the download episodes. Um, people like Amy Terrell, uh, Mr. Nail, I don't know. On here or not. But um, you know, thank you guys for supporting me. Thanks for watching this channel. And um, more to come on this podcast next week. Joseph Breen, who was uh, Will Jeffries back in the 1989 and 87, those two years. He's gonna be on here next week. And I'm excited about that because other than guy Lighting Road turns, um, I haven't seen him in a lot of stuff, so I'm glad to have him come aboard on here. And and um, everybody's been asking me about this uh uh, the guy in life story with a documentary I did about the show. Um, I'm a huge fan of the guy in life in the fantasy since 2000 when I was back in third grade, like way back in third grade. And as a result of that, I've been writing. And I put this documentary together to basically talk about the history of the show, how it became. And as an intro, I, I narrated about Jill from, I mean, um, Erna Phillips, who created the show, and the narration from talking with others like Mark and Tina and others who've been on my podcast. Um, it's, it's a lot of, it's basically three, it's like three and a half hours because there's so much stuff about God and Light, but, you know, I hope you guys check it out and um, enjoy it. And uh, thanks again for watching, um, Mark coming on, and um, I look forward to having him come back on and many others too come on down the road. Um, and stay tuned, you know, I'm, I'm working to get something with Maureen Garrett and Jerry eventually, so um, hopefully I get them back on. But um, Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day. And God bless. Stay safe.